guy you can see behind me, as you can see, he's deep in thought. He's thinking. And what he's thinking is, is it possible to have a blessing that is a curse? Or for that matter, a curse, which is a blessing. And the reason he's thinking these thoughts, you know, uh, I had a great and fantastic imagination growing up as many kids do. It was amazing. Great, great, amazing things I could do in my mind. And, and, and in my mind, I had two great friends. One was Puss in Boots, and the other one was Humpty Dumpty. We fixed him. This was the whole Humpty Dumpty that was fixed. And we used to do amazing things together. One of the things we did that I always remember to today is when we actually went to hell to quench the fire. <laughs> Trust me, even to date, I believe that the fire has been quenched, you know. <laughs> Some of you will get there and realize, oh, they quenched the fire. And, and, and in a way, I call this a great asset. The imagination. I call it a great asset. I'll tell you why. Because in real life, I am very laid back. I'm actually a very shy person in real life. You know. In real life, I remember I was, I even had inferiority complex. But when I had this power of imagination to travel into my world where I was the king, incidentally, I realized that it was actually affecting my real life. I was getting more confident in my real life because of my power of imagination. So that was an asset. But at the same time, this asset was a liability because I was in school, in class, and I had to pay attention in class. And that was the most difficult thing. I remember being in class one, you know, when the teacher was teaching, I was gone, man. I was hugging out with Humpty Dumpty. We were having fun. And it was so bad, I had to repeat class one. Honestly, <laughs> I didn't mind that I repeated class one. I had a crush on my teacher, so. <laughs> Please don't imagine anything. It was just a, it was an innocent crush. So I repeated class one, you know, because um, I couldn't quite get it. Somehow, I, I, I put the troubles on hold in class two, so I was able to go through class two. But class three, it came back. Very, 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 the highest form of imagination is in class three. Honestly, it was, it was so bad, I was considered a dafty. In our local language, we call something tiri, which means your head is dead. <laughs> and that's what they called me in class three. That's how bad it was, you know. So there was a little corner in the class that they kept me and one other guy that were considered TV, you know. <laughs> Literally means brain dead. If your head is dead, your brain is dead, you know. So in America, you can be that daft and they can do some tests and say, no, this guy has attention deficit disorder. They label it and it becomes cool, you know. My son has ADD, all right, you know. <laughs> and in Ghana, there was no such luxury, you know. If there was any name at all, it was going, it was going to be uh, something like an academic deficiency syndrome or something like that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, class three was bad. I actually repeated class three. Yeah, I repeated class three. Um, but somehow, when I got to class five, something Amazing happened in class five. Check this out. We're giving an essay to write, and they, give us, they gave us the opening line for the essay. And the opening line was, uh, it was a dark and windy night. Go and finish it. <laughs> and I was, I was very happy, man. I actually get to go and use my imagination. So I went and I just really put in everything that I could, man, to show I wasn't brain dead, you know. And, and, I, and I wrote it. 
So we get to class, and then the teacher comes in, and uh, he calls me. Then I was using the other name, Godfrey. He calls me, Godfrey, stand up. So I stood up, you know. I'm thinking, I've done well. And he says, Godfrey, where did you copy this thing from? <laughs> oh, teacher. I didn't copy I wrote, oh, shut up. <laughs> you know, the one time that my asset was elevating me, it became a liability. The crash, well, anyway, throughout primary school, I went through all this, the whole, the whole time going through this, you know. I, I have to sum it up, but uh, I, I finally went to secondary school, same thing. I was not the brightest at all. Uh, I was always in the lower three. But I, I was moving all along anyway, you know. But check this out, I got to university outside Ghana. I went to university in the US, and all of a sudden, I became an A student. I tell you. Uh, so I was thinking, wow, is the US system that bad? How am I making A's? I couldn't understand it until one time we had this, um, we, had a, we had an open book exam where you could, you could go to an exam and, and actually open your book, you know? So I did that, and then after the open book exam, the next big thing happened in my thinking. I realized, wow, even though it was an open book exam, some passed, some failed. So this whole thing about Knowledge is power and information is power. It's not really true. Because we all have access to the information and the knowledge. And some failed. So I said, wow, okay, let me change my thinking now. It is not knowledge that is powerful or access that is powerful. It is how you apply the knowledge. How, how you use the data. You know? So, because if you have all the knowledge and you don't use it right, then you have the knowledge, but you are not knowledgeable. You know? So that was sticking in my mind. And until I went to a, a film school, a grad school, and we had this another test, classroom assignment, to write our screenplay. And when I wrote the screenplay, the teacher came, the professor came, and he said, um, I want to read one screenplay to you guys because it really moved me. When he started reading it, it was for yours truly. Thank you. And when he read it, the class was applauding like you did. Then this is what he said. I chose to read this to you because I want you guys to understand how a screenplay should not be written. <laughs> so then again, another thought occurs. And I start thinking, redefining, and I realize that even with creativity, there are rules, there are regulations. You have to understand the art of creativity and the craft and the science of it, which means creativity is a learned art. You know? So I'm, I'm saying all of this because I'm rethinking how we can apply this creativity in our media, entertainment, in everything we do. And I went that far back to explain that most of the times what happens is that in educational systems, we sit on the children's imagination. And imagination is the bedrock for creativity. So when you sit on their imagination, you kill their creativity. That is why I was practically a brain dead student to an A student. Because somewhere along the line, the, the burden, the whatever was sitting on my imagination was lifted. So it took me into a new realm. So I want us all to rethink this. Rethink educational system, rethink our bringing rethink to understand that whatever it is, allow the creativity to flow, the imagination to flow, so that the creativity will come easily. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening.